All right, one, two, one, two. You know how we do with your boy BQ. It's the Impact Lounge. And this is a new podcast project that I've been thinking up for quite some time when I've been really want to get going. It's called Moving the Needle. And I'm going to be highlighting and focusing on some of the promotional and marketing efforts of Impact, uh, things that I would do differently. And then, of course, you guys can weigh on things you would do differently. I'm not going to lie to you and say this is going to be a weekly segment or even a monthly segment. I don't even know. You guys know how I am with my time right now. Um, I'm going to do my best to knock them out when I can, though. It's been my intention to pump up the content on the Impact Lounge kind of like it used to be. And I'm going to get there eventually. But um, right now, we're just kind of doing uh, the weekly podcast. And right now, as you're listening to me, we're going to get into moving the needle. And I thought this was a good time for me to start this podcast out. A good, uh, good first episode topic was Slammiversary. First, let me throw this out there. Slammiversary is going to be fine. Slammiversary is going to be good. This is the pay-per-view that Impact delivers with just about every single time. I don't remember how last year's went. I remember kind of thinking this wasn't as good as usual, but it was still good. But Slammiversary is the one that they, it, it's typically a home run in my opinion. And I think a lot of the fans too. It, a lot of the fans agree with that. Even though they say Bound for Glory is the biggest show of the year, it's never better than Slammiversary. And Slammiversary is always the one that they seem to put the most effort into. But this one feels a little bit different, right? Because the last couple of years, they were building it around who's going to show up. And it was a great, uh, they did some some of the best marketing they've done in years and some of the best promotion they've done in years. And it worked because they came up with a, with a strategy that was like, Hey, WWE's got their black Monday or whatever they call. They're going to fire people every year. We can pick up some of these dudes. Who's going to show up the first time they ever, you know, dropped that video. People were just buzzing on social media. And then last year they couldn't really do that. They, they, they kind of tried uh, but because AEW started becoming a thing, it started becoming difficult for them to, you know, they weren't the next option after WWE you know, anymore. So it was hard for them, uh, or at least appeared that way, to bring in the names that they really wanted to. So we, you know, we, we got a little bit of a watered down version, but it was still fun. They can't do, they, they can't do that this time around. Um, I'm sure we're going to get some kind of debut, but it's, it is different, right? with this day and age when it comes to wrestling and what AEW is doing right now, signing everybody. But it's, but it's a 20th anniversary. So they don't really need to do that because they are able to focus on some of the old TNA stuff. They've done some really good, um, you know, video packages on the, on the TV program. I think it was a very nice touch kicking off the show with, with old themes that are like a thousand times better than we on the night. And I personally appreciate it because I don't have to listen to We on the Night going into the show. Even though I like the version with lyrics about a thousand times better than the one without. Uh, and they make sure we hear that during the episode. But I think that was a nice touch too. The, the little Josh Alexander video package with the treasure chest and all that. Really good stuff. And then we get some TNA people pop in and out. Um, Chris Harris, uh, Shark Boy was there. Matt Morgan was there this past week. So... It's nice. It's a nice touch. And they announced the reverse battle royal today. And some people are like, okay, cool. And some people are like, oh my God, I cannot believe you guys are doing this again. Like, I thought it was one of those. I was listening to a Cornette podcast the other day. And they were, of course, someone said, like, what are your thoughts on the reverse ladder match from TNA? Totally random question. But it sucked because Cornette's reach is huge. It, it, it's. It's a lot larger than any of the podcasts that Impact pimps their talent out to for interviews and promotional things. It's, it's a lot larger than that. So Cornette coming on and just destroying the King of the Mountain match, if you will, just a few days ago, does, doesn't bode well for Impact's promotional game right now. It's, it's a lot more hurtful than anything Impact can do that's helpful <laughs> towards that match. And um, they brought up the reverse battle royal in it. And said, like, what a horrible idea that was. And most Impact fans kind of agree with that. So when I saw that today they were going to do it, I thought it was a joke. No kidding. Um, I don't hate it. I'm, I'm not, you know, it's a pre-show match. 
it's an opportunity to get some old TNA people and their shark boys going to be in there and stuff like that. You know what I mean? They're going to, they're going to bust out some old TNA names. Um, and hopefully it's some cool ones. Like, like, you know, even though he's a comedy wrestler, like Grado coming out with, with pop people, you know? So we'll see what they, what they do with that, but it's probably going to be, you know, very gimmicky, very comedy. A uh, former TNA person is probably going to win. You know, there's probably going to be no stakes. It's not going to mean anything. It's just kind of a fun thing for the pre-show. So, I don't really hate it like a lot of people do. If they put it on the main card or something, that'd be a different story. They likely, someone said on Twitter, I forgot who I was talking to, likely will not promote that match again. <laughs> and then we're just going to see it on the pre-show this weekend. There's going to be no video packages, no, no um, you know, social media marketing behind it. They just made the announcement and boom. So I'm not, I'm not against them doing it. I was going to commend them actually Prior, prior, uh, excuse me, prior to this announcement for not trying to force the entire roster on the pay-per-view, which they do quite a bit. I, I don't know the, the behind the scenes stuff and how like the pay works. It, it's very likely that it's, you know, it's, it's a way to give people a payday, an extra payday for a peer, you know, for those on per appearance and things like that. It, 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 I'm sure it has something to do with that. And then also getting people involved in the show. But, you know, I think wrestling fans usually feel that the more people are on there, the more watered down it kind of becomes. But Slammiversary is going to be okay. Slammiversary is going to be good. It's going to deliver. So just don't worry about that. But what people are worrying about, ticket sales. Um, and I feel like I created a monster sometimes because now I'm seeing people like, step up your marketing, step up your promotion and, I think there was even a fire Ross hashtag going around or something. I don't know what that was all about. And I've been talking about marketing from day one when I created the channel. From day one. That's always been because it was just my passion before even podcasting. And sometimes I feel like I'm being too harsh on impact. And, and there are times that I, I clearly am, you know, um, I started as that positive voice and then kind of transitioned into being a, a harsh critic with good intentions, but a harsh critic. So I feel like maybe, maybe I've been too hard on them when, it, when, when I'm like destroying their promotional and marketing tactics. But I was cleaning my garage today. I, I rented a dumpster. Dumpsters are expensive. This shit cost me 500 bucks, by the way, for a week. That is insane. But um, cleaning the garage out, doing spring cleaning a little late because, you know, we're moving to Nevada next year and I'm trying my best to get as rid of as much junk as possible. So I'm cleaning the garage and I come across a lot of my marketing books. And so, you know, some of them are based on Facebook and some are just marketing in general. Some cover all digital media. And I, then I kind of told myself, I don't think I'm that hard on them because it reminded me that I know what I'm talking about when it comes to that kind of stuff. I'm not just some fan that's just complaining about the company. Like I reminded myself, like I know what I'm talking about. So it's okay to hold them to a higher standard. Um, but slam reversary is going to be okay. I just want to keep putting it out there, but I know people are really concerned about the ticket sales. There's uh, there's a lot of people on Twitter you know, I've been a little more active on Twitter recently, and they're saying, you know, we're we're promoting ticket sales quicker and more often than Impact is. You know, they have the the tapings coming up in a couple of weeks. I think it's Atlanta, and some people are like, you know, it took them hours after it hit Ticketmaster, where wherever it was, it took them hours to say anything, and we're already pretty close to the tapings. So a lot of people are upset about it because they're like, we were tweeting before Impact did, and again, they're like tweeting more often as well. And they feel like they're the ones doing the promotion. And I think that's part of the problem is that I think sometimes the company relies on the fans to promote too much because that's kind of what Twitter is. Uh, that, that's kind of what Twitter's, Twitter is, is de designed for. Um, Twitter in theory is the platform that helps you lower your promotional and marketing costs because you put the news out there as quick as possible and then your followers retweet, obviously, and then it goes out to more, you know, to more people. Where on Facebook, people don't typically share things. 
at least not to the rate of Twitter, you know, retweeting. And obviously you can't do something like that on Instagram. Um, you know, YouTube is in its own like social platform, you know, so in theory, tw Twitter is a great idea. The problem with Twitter is that the initial reach to Twitter is a lot weaker than other social media platforms. So what does that mean? That means when you put a tweet out, uh, it doesn't matter how many followers you have, a small portion always get that tweet because you're competing with a lot of other tweets, all right? And that, that initial reach is not strong. It, it, it goes out to a, a pretty, pretty small percentage. Um, but, but I think that is a strategy. Hey, we're going to, we're going to use Twitter. People are going to retweet. And then people who don't follow the product currently are going to see the retweets. The thing is the cheapest and most effective way to reach your target audience is to create engaging content for your target audience, because that's what really gets people talking and that's what gets the chatter. And then everything's more organic and those posts are going to keep going throughout the day. If you're just like, hey, Slammiversary this weekend, retweet it, and it, and it retweets, the retweets are gone a couple hours later. But when you put out real engaging content or, or um, you know, I'm, try, I'm trying to think of a good example, like engaging content. So Twitter, when they were like, hey, in 30 minutes, we're going to announce a match for Rebellion or we have a big announcement, whatever it was. And it was... Jonathan Gresham defending the Ring of Honor title. You had people, number one, waiting for this 30 minute, like, okay, we're, we're waiting, we're on pins and needles. And then they put the tweet out and people were, I mean, you look at the engagement on that tweet, it's massive. And then people were continuing to talk about it all day. So that, that's engaging content. Posting, um, you know, Christopher Daniels from 2000, whatever, uh, an ultimate X um, or curry man or something, you know what I'm saying? Like no one that doesn't go in, you, you, you might retweet it, but it's, it's gone after, after a couple hours, engaging content keeps people talking. And that's what they're really, really missing from the platforms. You know, your, uh, your Samoa Joe clips don't give you any, any chatter. That's what, that's where you can really utilize word of mouth and make Twitter work for you. But right now, I think they just feel, okay, we're just going to put the information out there. The fans are going to retweet it, and that's going to be good enough. There's really creative ways to leverage Facebook and Instagram. They've given up on Facebook. You go there, Facebook right now, completely given up. And Instagram, is, their Instagram isn't too bad. It, it's not horrible. But though, the thing is, Facebook is the easiest platform to create engaging content on. And it doesn't matter whether it's Twitter, Facebook, whatever, the more engagement you have, the more likes, retweets, comments, um, comments are really strong. Um, trying to think what else you can do. The more of that it has, the more likely that post is going to stay on people's social feed the entire day. And maybe even the day after that. Facebook's the easiest one to do that on. Because you can do, you can just post a graphic and ask a question. What match are you looking forward to at Slammiversary? Or, or something along those lines, you know? What's your favorite match in Slammiversary history? What's your favorite, what's your favorite Impact 20 moment? What's your favorite moment in Impact history? Can you imagine the, the, the comments that you would get? You could do that on Twitter. You could do that on Instagram. You could do it on Facebook. And people would just be boom, 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 talking about it all day, you know? And you, that's what that's what's like really missing with a lot of how they how they do this. Facebook is super easy to run ads. Super, I shouldn't say super easy. You got to know what you're doing, but there's it's it's cheap, very very cheap, and it's very effective. Twitter ads suck. Instagram ads suck. Like that's a waste of money. They're both very expensive to run too. Facebook is is pretty cheap. I mean, you're talking about someone clicks on your ad or watches your video. It's like someone clicks on your ad. It's like 60 cents at the most if someone watches your video if you do an ad with a video it's like five cents for a view or something like that i mean it's it, it, it it's very very cheap they made a really cool video the other day that they posted on twitter i don't remember what it was to be honest i watched it but i just don't remember what it was but they made a really cool promotional video 
And, um, you know, shout out to Bison. Uh, you know, he, he left a comment like, why isn't this, and I say this all the time, why isn't this on YouTube right now? Why isn't this on Facebook? Why isn't it flooding their other social channels? Why isn't it only here on Twitter? Because they think people are going to retweet it and then more people are going to see it. But the thing is, they have bigger followings on those other platforms. And Instagram reach is excellent. Uh, very, very good. So you can put promotional stuff on Instagram and you can do engaging stuff on Instagram and it's actually going to work really, really well for you. Um, you know, that, that's a reason a lot, you know, a lot of celebrities and, and stuff are most active on Instagram. You know, that there's actually a very good opportunity. But it's like, why isn't this on the other social channel? Why, why is it this on YouTube? That's, that's what's like mind blowing with as many subscribers as they have. And I've said this a thousand times. I'll say it a thousand more times while I do these podcasts. They, YouTube is a major missed opportunity for them. Um, something I, I pointed out while the Women's Ultimate X was happening, or when they were getting ready to do that, was promotional video packages for that. And, and there was two. Two ideas that I, I had that I think would have been extremely effective. Uh, one would be showing the history of the match which they kind of post clips and, and things like that. But the history of the match with relevant voiceovers that quickly highlight the girls involved in the match and their accomplishments. Like this girl is a two-time knockouts champion. She's a five-time knockouts tag team champion. Um, and, and you can factor in some of the, the, the male, because we're talking about the women's ultimate X here. You can factor in some of the male clips, some of, you know, AJ Styles, you know, doing what he does they love posting aj stuff some of these other dudes who uh had really memorable moments in ultimate x and um just just the, explain what the match is explain the rules and you know explain who each of the participants are instead of just posting the graphic like for the first time ultimate x instead of just posting that give us more give us something to seek our teeth into Instead of just saying something is Ultimate X, tell us what Ultimate X is. You feel me on that? Um, the other idea I had come up with was video package, you know, for social media again, of each of the women, and you can you could post one a day, uh, two a day, whatever, whatever you want to do. You, there's there's software where you can know what time of the day, what hours most of your followers are on social media, and that's when you put this stuff out. And it's, it's, you know, a package of each woman telling you why they need to win Ultimate X, why they need to win the first ever Ultimate X. It's a, it's, um, it's a little extra promo time because when someone's just recording by themselves, recording a video, they're going to deliver probably a better promo than if they're backstage or if they're standing in the ring, you know. But if you have that Tasha Steele's one and she's she's telling you why she has to be the first knockout to ever win this thing, you know, and you kind of get that every single day and you get to know the wrestlers individually. So I, I feel they could do something like that with Queen of the Mountain. Put out something that reminds us what these rules are. Show us show us some of the clips that you love to show some some, you know, some of the great spots from Queen of the Mountain, uh, excuse me, from King of the Mountain. And. The same thing, you know, Mia Yim putting out a video package. Mia Yim's hot on social media right now. Like, that's, that's one that would get retweeted quite a bit, shared quite a bit on social platforms, and people who don't really follow Impact would probably take interest in hearing what she had to say. They might not care what, um, who else is in the match? I already said Tasha Steeles, but they might not care what, I'm just going to throw a name out there, what Ty Valkyrie has to say. You know what I mean? But when you segment it per wrestler, each wrestler has their own fan base, some that are outside of the company. So you put that out, and the people who really like Mia Yim, oh, let me check this out. The people who really like Ty Valkyrie, oh, let me check this out. You know what I mean? Instead of just keeping everyone in the same playing field, you're just promoting a graphic all the time that shows them all. You know, something where you can get to know each of the wrestlers. And as far as this Ultimate X goes, you know, it's... It's men. It's the males this time around. I would still do a video highlighting the, some of the craziest spots from Ultimate X in the past. Because some of the craziest finishes, I would say. Probably not so much the spots, but like a lot of the finishes. Because the, there's been some creative ones that they've come up with. 
Um, and then you, and then you can throw in some clips of the current wrestlers and some of their coolest high flying moves that they that they do. You know, even what they put out for Jack Evans was pretty good. Uh, you know, something like that for Alex Zane would have been cool. Something like that for everybody. Uh, you know, on the actual actual episodes, no, they, that wouldn't work for this because they did qualifying matches. Never mind. But yeah. So that's kind of what I'm thinking. And, and you see video is really, really good on social media because it's, it's um, again, prom- promotion wise, it's the cheapest, but it's also the content that gets the most love. It gets the most, um, you know, the most chatter underneath it when you're putting out actual video clips, not links to videos, but actual clips. And speaking of links to videos, they did a interview with Scott Demore the other day with, uh, with Tom Hannafin. And it said, you know, it's it's on Impact Plus. Okay, now we're trying to bounce people over to Impact Plus. Like I've been saying this for years now. Like create original content for Impact Plus that make people want to go there. But like now, all of a sudden, like you got to be subscribed to Impact Plus to hear what Scott Demore has to say about the show. I, I I like it, but I don't like it. I would like it more if we had other reasons to subscribe to Impact Plus already. You know, if they were doing this kind of stuff regularly. But this kind of thing, because it's for the pay-per-view, should have been on YouTube. Or it should have just been a raw video clip on Twitter. You know, because again, Twitter, uh, video content, like direct up, directly uploaded videos do very, very well. Um, I'm not overly optimistic about this go-home show. I've, I've said that majority of the episodes in 2022 I've really liked. And in the past, including this year and last year and the year before, it, it, my least favorite episodes always seem to be the go-home ones. They're just always like really weird where it features a bunch of people who aren't on the card. Um, it, it just, I, I don't, I just don't like them. I, I, I usually don't, you know, they're, they're very different than the other episodes. This past episode, T and, TW and I didn't review it because I, I, and I, I, I'm not trying to beat an opinion down your throat. I'm I'm never trying to do that. No matter if I sound like I am, I I promise you I'm not. We hated that episode and we didn't want to review it. We didn't want to talk about it. (laughs) That's, that's how much we didn't like it. A lot of people did like it. And and that's fine because we all have different tastes, different flavors. And even though we probably owe it to the audience, to review properly, like we really didn't want to review this episode. You know, um, I don't want to go here, sit on here and complain about, I don't mind saying, hey, I don't like this, I don't like this. But when it's like the entire episode, you know, sans the main event, that was great. But when it's the entire episode, I, I can't do that to the listeners. Where I'm just, because I promise you, I was going to knock every single thing on that episode, except for the main event. And everything I, I was going to say was going to make sense too. It was nothing like just for the sake of, you know, complaining. So, Let's look at Josh Alexander, for instance. He needed this win. He needed to beat Joe Doring. They, they said Joe Doring's undefeated. Um, it's, it, wrestling has been doing this forever, where you go through the lackeys to get to the guy at the pay-per-view. When you got this guy who's, who's undefeated, just held the tag team titles, your world champion is going against him, and you do a BS DQ finish, who gets momentum out of that? I understand they're trying to build heat. That's obviously where they're going with it. But you guys have heard me talk about this a lot. Momentum, momentum. Who's getting momentum going into a pay-per-view? You know, who who in this roster right now has momentum? Uh, last week, Mia Yim got a good match. I mean, a good win, I should say. Uh, Kenny King got a good win. Like, where where's the momentum? Moose doesn't have momentum. Sammy Callahan doesn't have momentum. It's a little different because they're not showing him wrestle. Or he's not wrestling. Josh Alexander doesn't have momentum because he didn't win the match. Eric Young doesn't have momentum because all they're doing is sneak attack stuff. Um, no one in the X division does. Ace Austin could, but they didn't share any of his super junior stuff with us on social media. They only shared um, when he joined the Bullet Club. But there, there was he was doing a lot before that, getting great wins and having great matches, and he didn't say nothing about it on social. So you know, Trey Miguel hasn't wrestled. You know, and then you got. Jack Evans and, and uh, Alex Zane. For, uh, for the record, this Ultimate X, though, I think is going to be one of the best they ever do. I think the styles of each wrestler are so good and so different and so 
just unique and they're so athletic. Like, I really think this is the one where people are like, holy shit, you know? They've had some pretty decent ones here recently, but I really think this one is going to deliver. But who has momentum in that match? Who in the Queen of the Mountain field really has, like, momentum aside from Mia Yim, you know? Uh, Jana Perazzo doesn't. She keeps she keeps showing her lose. Uh, who, who else is in it? Um, Tasha Steeles doesn't really, even though she's the champ. You, you feel what I'm saying? Tag team. Um, you could say the Briscoes have a little going for them. Um, you know, they've, they've, they're a great addition to the show right now. Great addition. So, I mean, you can say, I, I guess, the Good Brothers as well. Because didn't they? No, they lost, right? They lost the Honor No More recently. You know, so... And then don't get me started on Honor No More and the PCO stuff right now. Do not get me started on that. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do it. I'm going to I'm gonna calm down because then you're really going to hear me go off. Um, but yeah, but that's all I got for you guys. Slammiversary will deliver, though. I know that it will. I know that it's going to be good. There's no, no doubt in my mind about that. But the way they promoted up till now has not been ideal and... Oh, yeah, and that's just not me talking. That's the Impact people, the Impact fan base, the faithful, if you will, saying it on social media, pointing it out, saying this is bad, this is poor, this needs to be stepped up, you know? And they have the capabilities because they do it. We've seen them do it for very short periods of time. It just doesn't continue. It doesn't, you know, the, they don't keep up their own momentum. It's, it's just like there's a week where all of a sudden they just, the marketing is really good and then it just completely falls off and the fans see it, you know? So, um, but that's what I got for you guys. Uh, thanks for checking me out. This is moving the needle. Hope you dig it. Please leave your thoughts in the comments and I'll try to do these as, as much as I possibly can. I don't know when I will get to the next one. It just kind of depends on what impact is doing and what they're promoting, obviously. So thanks for checking me out. I'm your boy BQ. I'm out. Peace.